Ag. <laughs> Wait, no kisses here with us. She's Ag. Unintentional Lakers colors. <laughs> You're live, sort of. I don't know what's going on. Let's try this one more time. Guys, it looks like we're live. <laughs> I'm sorry. We but finally go live. Good and holy. Audio's <laughs> up. Internet's up. We are live. It's only 18 minutes into the 18th episode, and we're finally starting the podcast. With the 18th introduction. Woo-hoo! I'm your host, Justin McDonald, here with host Magic Matthew Fisher, special guest, and interim fact checker, Layton. How do I say your last name? <laughs> Ocus. Ocus. Executive producer and our friend Dave Miller broadcasting live out of the Workspace Collective in beautiful downtown Ocala. Whew. Here we are. You may have heard this. You may have not heard this introduction 18 <laughs> times. I don't know if any of them came through. We have a hard out at nine today, and I kind of wish I didn't even say those words. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm sure that's going to get cut up. So You have a what o'clock at I, nine? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know that yours runs on like a time zone. Mine just kind of like happened. Yeah, they say if it lasts for more than four hours. <laughs> I'm so to call sure That's like the four hour mark. I don't yeah. want to fact check yeah. that. Yeah. I'm, I'm good. My boy's an early riser. You get what I'm talking about? <laughs> This is what happens when we, uh, we get a little goofy trying to get the show working. Yeah, well. Oh, so I think, Leighton, I think we may end up having to do a, uh, a second episode with you because this has been such a, a little task getting us started. But we're going to jump right into it. There we go. That's the only thing we can do. I didn't take any notes. Well, neither did I, so it's fine. It's, it's, been, it's, it's been a hectic morning. I think Leighton was the only one that showed up with their stuff together, yeah. and that's questionable at best. So, yeah. you I know. was prepared for 10 minutes of talking-ish. Yeah, Ooh. you've had multiple like facial expressions of like, oh, crap, Like when we're like, hey, you're going to actually be on the mic the whole time. Yeah, usually I prep people like, oh, you're going to be on a hot mic, sorry, uh, but I guess I just... I thought, oh, she knows that Jesse's out of town. This will this will be fine. Do you, I, like I do that too. I'm like, I'm pretty sure I told them. I think I told them. Yeah. If not, I put the energy out into the universe oh, so they know. Oh, I had a conversation yesterday where I said, oh, I'm I'm sorry. I thought I talked to you about that. And they go, no, you didn't. I said, I know. I thought I did. Yeah. <laughs> and it's the thought that counts. That's what they said. I can it's be not... I can be real bad about that with uh, with Lauren. Yeah. And with, being like, yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure I told you. She's like, nah, you didn't tell me anything. And I'm like. You're right. I just thought about that. And speaking of which, happy birthday, Lauren. It's happy my wonderful birthday, wife's Lauren. birthday. Yeah. She's yeah. probably at home sleeping with the baby, but it's fine. She'll see this later. Happy 36th. Am I supposed, 30th. To, am I not supposed to say that? Yeah, 30th. She's 29. 29. Mm-hmm. Happy 29th happy 29. birthday. 29. 29. Uh-huh. Happy yep. 29. Yep. Uh, all right. I'm hopping right into my notes that I did actually take. Ooh. I don't know which one you to have, Yeah, you spent all morning like writing. I and had that's probably feeling, why we had all these difficulties. I had a feeling that you were going to come in with zero anything. I barely even made it here this morning. Except for good attitude. You had a good attitude. And I appreciate that. <laughs> I was thankful energy. that I didn't die on my trip here. Yeah, in your, your uh, Ultima driving skills. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. The worst thing I cut off was an actual, like, tractor. They deserve to be cut off. I know well, so, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> if it's rush that? hour traffic and you're the dimbus... Nimbus, whatever, trying not to cuss here, who's driving the same speed as the freaking tractor, you should have your license revoked. Yeah. yeah it's you like, gotta go. Yeah, it's 7, 7.30 in the morning on a major road, and you're driving the same speed as a farm tractor. GTFO. Like, like the they Dutch were literally block? doing a Polish roadblock. They are both Polish roadblocks. <laughs> yeah. That's about the Dutch roadblock. I can say that. Yeah, because you're... I I'm, can say that. I'm also Polish. Yeah, my grandfather was born there. So, Straight up 15%. I'm pretty sure that's how that works. Uh, like, you yeah. can say it if... Yeah. Yeah, I think so. But yeah, they, they were just driving next to each other. Like, that enraged me. Yeah, so, I, I came in with, like, road rage energy. Anyway, I digress. No. <laughs> <laughs> you must have got a text that. No, no, no. That was just a... a, a, a just laugh. a weird laugh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, it's fine. <laughs> I have a lot going on in my life right now, and yeah, I'm just trying to process the events of this morning with all these technical difficulties and, you know. So, so. quick blurb that's not uh, worth going over too much. I guess Peloton. Peloton's been going through the ringer recently. The bike people. The bike people. The fake so, bikes. Well, they're not fake. They're can, stationary. Can we? I, we've addressed it. <laughs> okay. That's like, wait, that's like calling one of those cars in front of the supermarket. It goes up and down like, that's just a stationary car. No, it's it a is. fake car. 
It's not no, a real car. I think there's a slight No, because you're not actually driving where you are pedaling the bike. Anyway, can that you... that motion again? <laughs> pedaling the bike. That's how I pedal the bike. Uh, we've addressed it live 19 times, but I don't think it made it. Can we just talk about the fact that you blend in perfectly with the couch? <laughs> I wore my couch cam out today. That's a big old floating head. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's like I came so amped up. I had a, I had a jacket on. And I was just like, all right, I'm getting hot, so I'm going to take that off. And immediately realize the air of my waves as I look into Dave's screen and I see that. Uh, I'm just yep. a floating head. Here. just a floating head. Nice. Oh, uh, wow. Yeah, so Peloton. Right? You really are. <laughs> they had, uh, what, what's the like uh, Sex in the City sequel show? It's like, and then there was that. Or Sex in the that? Suburbs. Yeah, Sex in the Suburbs. Anyway, one of the main characters, spoiler alert, it's the first episode, so Did if you haven't seen it? it. My wife watches it. Okay. But, so that's a yes. Yeah. But this guy dies. <laughs> wow. Spoiler. Like, be, yeah, I just said it was a spoiler alert. <laughs> well, but I didn't like, know it was going to be like a real one. It's the catalyst to the beginning of the show, so it's not a big deal. This guy dies on the Peloton, right? He has like a heart attack. Everyone who dies is a big deal, but keep going. Yeah. Well, his name is Big, so in the oh. show. Wow. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think Lady knew that information. And she was I just setting herself for a layup. No, I actually never watched the show, so keep going. Yeah, you're not missing anything. Anyway, so it's a pretty big character that dies, right? And so Peloton had like a little bit of a, a dip market wise. Well, now some other like, you know, nursing general hospital type show or whatever also had a large character die. Okay. So and it's just used as this like trope. Now that like, all right, you know, someone's trying to get fit and dies with a heart attack on the Peloton. And so I think there was like, I think there was, uh, I think they were working collaboratively on the first one because then they had like a commercial with him that's like, cardiovascular fitness is important, so you should do this. But with the second one, they're like, yo, we didn't approve that death. <laughs> Even though it's fake, like it's affecting our numbers. Y'all got to stop having people die in movies and shows. Anyway. On Pelotons. On Peloton specifically. I heard they're dangerous. So they're having a, uh, the CEO's having a like company wide meeting. And I guess they didn't do a, uh, like a password protected. It was like anyone that has the Zoom link or whatever. So I guess a bunch of like ex employees hopped on oh, and just completely crashed their, uh, you know, the CEO's Zoom meeting with the entire company. And I'm like, ooh. They are really, uh, they are really feeling the effects of. Uh... Maybe that's why our Facebook kept crashing. We had so many viewers trying to log yeah, on all it. at once at that like yeah. eight o'clock time that it just crashed the meta that's, network. That's honestly got to be it. I can't that's the only thing that makes sense. Any we have... other thing that it could be other than us just being. We've tested the hardwired so internet heavy. connection here at Workspace Collective, and it is so like then... blazing fast. So maybe we know it, it's not that. Maybe it is my fault. It's, I I mean, can, it's definitely. I am the special fault. guest, so if like <laughs> everyone in Ocala was trying to log in at the same time, <laughs> she do I got a point. Made it blow up. <laughs> was it local legend <laughs> Layton? Is that? I, mean, I did get called a legend. So who was that? Are we gonna call them out? I, she doesn't know. I don't know. Oh. I just said, please use a photo that makes me look skinny and classy and fun loving. That then, and that's one we came JK, up with, huh? We know we're not going to find. <laughs> and then that. I was like, "Just kidding! You yeah. never want to look through all my photos." Here's one that Dave took, where yeah. I fit that description. Yeah, it's <laughs> always a good. It's always a good choice just to go with the Dave photo, you know, because you, you know it's going to be a good one. It was a Pacific Islander native that said it. Well, not native. He's native to Ocala, like the Rock Karsten. No. Said that I was a legend. He said local legend. He's oh, being nice. I it was, was super nice late guy. at night, so he may have been a little drunk. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> just being nice. He'd just fallen off a skateboard, so he had a also, head wound. Just the alliteration yeah. with the L's. He was probably right. just, you know, right. going with it. I Thanks, definitely Jared. alliteration fan. Uh, speak, you said The Rock. Speaking of The Rock, I don't even. I, I almost don't even want to bring it up. But Under Armour has him as Under Armour has him as like a, a spokesperson, and I'm one of their targeted demographics on Facebook. <laughs> you are. Under Armour, yeah. yeah. Believe it or not, reasons. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. So anyway, I see their ads all the time, but all of a sudden, within the past like three or four days, they've launched these, you know, Dwayne Johnson ads, and they're just getting blown up with the worst negativity that you can imagine. And they keep deleting and restarting the campaigns, and they just keep <laughs> getting re blown up with people that Why? are angry. Who doesn't like The Rock? Uh, he. Uh, that's where I don't really want to go down that road. Mm, but have you watched Ballers? He's amazing. Fallers? I have not watched Ballers. 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 
No, what is that? You really don't know what that is? Well, it's ballers. Are you kidding me? No, I don't. Is this I, like where you made fun of me for watching Vikings? I didn't. I thought you said you were hag. You said <laughs> you'd lag. And then we had lag. So I don't want to bring it up again. I am not a hag. And ballers is an amazing show on HBO. No, I definitely have not watched that mm. show. Well, you should. No, I'm not even familiar with it. It's literally I can only watch one football. HBO show with an ex-professional wrestler. And right now that's <laughs> John Cena and Peacemaker. Peacemaker. <laughs> Peacemaker is such a great show, and it's rekindled my love for freaking 70s and 80s metal music. Yeah, but also, like, I, like last time I was watching, I was like, John Cena, I was, I was explaining it to my wife. I was like, the guy has more... Um, you were mansplaining it? it to your wife. I was mansplaining <laughs> it. Yes, I was. Because she was just like, she made a comment about him, you know, she, I think she knew he was a wrestler, but made the comment like he wasn't famous, and it's cool that they got... Hold on. Like, <laughs> like, my wife doesn't watch professional wrestling. She's only 29. Maybe yeah. it's because she couldn't see him. I think, I think that is the case. And she was just like, well, it's cool that he has this opportunity. Like, opportunity, he's on the show. And I'm like, Lauren. <laughs> I'm like you can't like, say that too loud in Ocala. Those like, start coming yeah. out of the woodworks. <laughs> but like it, you know, if you don't know, you don't know. But I'm like, he is massive in professional wrestling. But then I also was just like, he has fulfilled more. What is it? Um, make a wish. Make a wish foundation yeah. requests than like anyone in history. And like that's, I feel like that's like a part time job. And he yeah. speaks Mandarin. What? Get out. Well, you didn't know that? How do you know so much about John Cena? Well, I is know that did, he, because... did he Did he apologize to China? Because he apologized to China. Oh. And that was like one of the wildest things I've ever seen. Like, American hero John Cena, like, in Mandarin apologizing for calling Taiwan a country. Like, yeah, it was my bad. I really want to make money in your market. <laughs> Oh well, it's a big market. That's you know? where we're at right now. We can't make fun of John Cena too much, considering like almost all the big media conglomerates are conglomerates are like doing the same thing. In oh Pandering yeah, the NBA. China, you know? The NBA is like, don't you dare tell us to shut up and dribble, unless you're China. Yeah, <laughs> and you got it. It's like then Disney. We'll absolutely, be quiet. Yeah, it's like Disney's like, oh, we have to overlook the you know the the, the genocide of a certain population of right. uh, Uyghurs. Yeah, sure, you know. Yeah. That's fine. As long as our movies can be released. Yeah, we got, just got to have that release. We're going to do these yeah. movies that we we really think everyone wants. Shang-Chi. That was a complete just money grab. You, oh, my God. But I'm like, you're going to pull a Marvel character that, like, is not been relevant, I think, for a very long yeah, time. But they pulled Peacemaker out, who's an irrelevant I actually DC really character. Like Shang-Chi. I haven't seen it, so I can't. The it movie? Was, yeah, it was beautiful. Did you know who it was before that nope, movie? Never okay. heard of him. Right. And that's fair. And the, the argument there is gonna be like, oh, we're we're doing this for inclusion, which is fine, you should. Yeah. I get it. I will But say it's a that. money grab as well. Come on. Marvel has been so popular. I'm like low key rooting for DC just because it's like they've had an awful go of it. Yeah. And like a lot of their movies are trash. Um So why are you trash. rooting for trash? No, I want them to do better. You're here. <laughs> <laughs> like, the, the Batman movies were good. And like, the one cut of Justice League was good. Peacemaker's been good. The new Suicide... You know, so it's just like... The, they, the latest Suicide Squad was... Which is they, where Peacemaker was, like, launched. Yeah. Was awesome. So it's like, I, I don't have... Like, I'm not a big comic book fan. It's just like, they're the underdog in this story between, like, the two big, like, comic book people. So I'm like, I'm like low-key rooting for them. So I'm like, yeah, you know, you have some successful stuff. Definitely go the more adult route. I think that's their niche. Yeah. Then like, well, like Peacemaker Marvel is like is super very adult. Yeah, and it's working for him. Yeah. So, but so is like with the Batman movies, where like super dark and like violent and. Yeah. And I, I just think I can that, deal with like, a little bit of that. DC just needs to lean into the hey, our demographic is going to be the twenty-one and up it's crowd the or the eighteen people. and up crowd. Yeah, <laughs> and because and, Marvel has like definitely has like that younger population and. I watched that one Joker movie though, and that was just straight up trash. The j- just called Joker? Yeah, the Joaquin. Oh, I like that one. one. What? It's trash. Yeah, I agree Ew. with you. What? Yeah. You guys are insane. No don't, way. Don't you guys? I like that. Oh, I thought you said you Jeez. agreed. I'm sorry. I got oh, all just looking at me you while I like with it? you. I just it's try hardy. Let me let me fill you no, in. He he, he just likes didn't understand. No. Mm, maybe it yeah. was just too complex for you. I I think that people that want to <laughs> act smart or seem smart say that they like those movies cuz they think that it makes them appear smart but ultimately it's like it's not that are you gonna watch it again is it like oh i'm gonna put it i've actually actually watched it a couple times times. what's wrong in your lives why are you so broken he does this thing like he does this thing where he will take a popular movie that is i think objectively good that people like and he doesn't like it and i will give you examples he hates the joker movie he hates drive and he hates um mad max fury road yeah, like those are some of, those trash, are some trash, of trash. my favorite movies. They're amazing, and well, he's, he's just kind like these of are garbage. An angry person, so that makes sense. 
Mad Max Fury Road was so. I love that movie. It's so, so good. It's so, again try hardy. Very In try what hardy. way? I fell asleep, so thank I, you. I never oh, finished. Yeah. Tom Hardy. <laughs> Tom Hardy. Yeah. Uh, I do love Tom Hardy though. Same. I will say. I, I do have a tendency, if a certain type of person likes a movie, <laughs> I kind of already don't like it. Ew, not you two. I'm so offended. Yeah, not you two. Uh, but the Joker, to me, is just one of those, like, okay, it's a talk piece, like, and the acting is really great. Like, Joaquin Phoenix is really great, but it's like, okay. Like, He's I got a name really... like Leighton Ocus. Like, I, I didn't know how to pronounce like it for a long time. The complexity of his mental health issues was fascinating. I literally spent, the first time I watched it, I spent the entire time trying to diagnose him. I obviously have no clinical background to do so, but uh, the whole time I was like, what does he have? This is amazing. I, I think what annoys me is the people that come out and start like quoting and like sharing memes and I'm like, oh. Yeah, I already don't like it. Well, there is that one meme that's like, if you like idolize these people, you're missing the point. And it was right. like a picture of like the Joker, Rick from Rick and Morty. Um, and there's like a couple other characters that are like terrible, terrible characters with horrible flaws. And they're just horrible people, yeah. you know, fictional people. But still, and, and it's like, I agree with that because there is a group of people that are like, oh, and they like, they... I don't know if they aspire, but they, you know, look at that like they're some kind of hero or, you know, like so, it's something you should, like, look up to. And it's just like, no, nah, dude, they're flawed. They're really messed up in the head, right. you know? And, uh, yeah, that's that's kind of a weird part of it, too. And that's that's that goes for a lot of characters and just people in general. It's like, yeah, you're, you're idolizing the wrong thing there. Mm -hmm. And let me, let me clarify. I do think that Joker was a decent movie. Okay. I did not like Drive, and I did not like Fury Road at all. At, not in the least. That's bit. that's the first unwanted opinion of this episode. Can, can <laughs> I can I see where there's decent acting? Sure. Am I tired of Hollywood just constantly patting themselves on the back for how you know immensely uh, diverse and and you know intelligent they are? Like, yeah, I'm tired of that. Like, have you seen the the nominations for this year? Nominations for what? For the Oscars. I don't even know what the Oscars are. Don't look up. Yeah, don't look up. Call I, I wasn't here on that episode. Was I? No, no, it wasn't. It's been a blur. But it's I like Don't Look Up. I like Don't Look Up too. I yeah. thought it was so clever. It was so entertaining. It's look, look, I like It I, was relevant. I like dark comedy. Oh, I like, love how I like, stressed out you are right yeah. now, Justin. This is delightful. I like like Cable Guy is a top dark movie of mine. Is fine. And Thinking I like dark comedy and that was it. For for liking a movie that's like so obviously a talking point. Is just annoying. To it's me. topical, and and to have that beat out. Really, what the the movie that did it for me that I was finally like, you know what, I'm out of this. I'm not going to pay attention to Oscars at all, other than to get angry about it. <laughs> was La La <laughs> Land? Never saw it. La La Land was literally Hollywood talking about Hollywood, you know, and then parading Hollywood at the Oscars, and it's like. I'm so over it. Like, you're, you're not paying attention to what people are watching at all. Like, Jimmy Fallon, of all people, is it Jimmy Fallon? Jimmy Kimmel. Jimmy Kimmel was like, really? You're going to you're gonna deny Spider-Man No Way Home? Like, they're not on there at all? You really don't think that that was, like, just because it's a feel-goody movie, like, that shouldn't be on there? Action movie that just follows the action movie guidelines. Have you watched it? Is that the new, new one? Yeah. No. Okay. So, you're, but I, but like, I at least I watched I'm your crap movies. On it. I watch your crap movies. I right? haven't left watch my house in a month. You watch it on whatever streaming. I don't think it's on. streaming yet. I don't think oh. it's streaming yet. Yeah. Like, okay. Tried. Whatever. I don't I'm go to the saying. theater. Well, that's not true. Oh, so you haven't seen Spider Man either? I go to the Marion Theater, but not uh, right. Not the new normal ones. theaters. Duh. You watch Indian <laughs> and uh, and and uh, do, yeah, they still do indie flicks there because you did the Villages movie. Oh. I thought you said something else. Yeah, me too. Um, Crisscross Cross Yeah, okay. we're not allowed to say that. <laughs> Bollywood. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, when that movie was redone, it was meant for indie theaters. That's where I saw Before the Devil Knows You're Dead, which is a dark movie that I like. Which one? Oh. Before the Devil Knows You're Dead. It's with Philip Seymour Hoffman. Sounds really dark. Ethan Hawke. Marissa Tomei? Marissa Tomei. Marissa Tomei. <laughs> I could be, that could be another movie altogether that I'm thinking about, but it was, it was a really good movie. I'm going to look it up later. But when the Marion Theater was originally redone, the the first like the last first time. last time, yep. yeah, mm -hmm. uh, that was all. It was supposed to be indie movies, and they had a good run there for a little while. It's kind of like the Enzion does or did that does that. You know, I think that's is it all the Enzion? And that's what I've always called it, the Enzion. Not Enzion. I don't know. Oh, it's the Enzion. You're right. Enzion. 
don't yeah. even think you're supposed to say the. I think you're just supposed to say Enzian. But it's more fancy with the in front of it. True. The and I think you can the. say it whichever way you choose. That was like the first movie theater I ever went to that had like table and food and beer service in the movie. And I was like, this is pretty cool. But luckily the chairs weren't too comfortable so you fall asleep. They were just uncomfortable enough to that kept you awake. Yeah, those reclining because chairs, like, I fall asleep in. I've seen people go to the movies and post their pictures on Facebook, and I haven't been to one of those theaters ever yet, and I'm like, I can't go. I'm going to spend $20 on a ticket, get my assigned seat, sit down in this lazy boy, and I'm going to wake up an hour and a half later with no recollection of the movie. Yep. So I get like, give me a traditional movie theater seat. That reminds me of when I went and saw The Hobbit, but I didn't know that they were splitting The Hobbit into three movies. I like what Peter Jackson does, but... Yeah, to me, you took the shortest book of them all and made it as long as like the series. So I'm I'm watching it and I'm like, what is this backstory? I don't remember this in the book at all. And then I fall asleep. I'm there with like Janie and a few other people. It's a midnight premiere, and I wake up and I can't remember the part of the movie that it's in or or, or the book, I should say. And I'm like, we're not even halfway through the book. Like, all right, guys, I'm leaving. And they're like, why are you leaving? I'm like, I'm not gonna make this. Yeah. And then Janie's like, hey. You know it's three movies, right? And I was like, what? I'm like losing my mind in the middle of the theater at Marion Theater. Like, yeah, right? Shocker. <laughs> like, no. What? No. I'm out. I'm not doing this. And I've, I've not watched the second or the third. That was a bold is... move of him. Bold move. To break it up into the three? Yeah. yeah I don't, he, I... They, they said, oh, he found all this other source material and additional stuff from Tolkien and whatnot, which, you know, I believe he probably had a bunch of crap like that. But yeah. like, I'm mean, still like... I'm going to go back and watch the cartoon because that was more entertaining. The cartoon was amazing. <laughs> See, we can agree I mean, the book things. was good. Like, I've, I've said it before. I've read The Hobbit and I enjoyed it. I tried to read the Lord of the Rings yes. trilogy and it's tedious and I stopped halfway I... through The Fellowship of the Ring because he's too verbose. I got all the way through, but it was work. Like, yeah. I didn't enjoy yeah. it. The whole trilogy? So I read the yeah. trilogy, but not The Hobbit. I Go read The Hobbit. It's like, it's, oh, man, it's easy. Now I feel like I should. Easy read. I actually great. read your copy of The Hobbit. Can yeah. you stop banging on this desk, please? Sorry. Um, yeah, and so it was definitely my favorite book. I, like, I don't know how you can go from, yeah. It just like, The writing a, style was like, to me, I was just like, how, how do you do this book? And then all of a sudden this book comes it's, out. It's <laughs> perfect for like someone making a movie, though, because he describes everything in great yes. detail. Yes, oh my gosh. Including a whole new language. Yeah, that, is, did, that guy was something else. Yeah, pretty, pretty impressive. Something else. What, all right. did, <laughs> what were we even talking about? Lazy cocktails. Cool. Ooh. I'm just going to Go. say that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Interesting. So, you know, a few years ago, White Claw took off, right? And it was just like the seltzer game was like totally changed. And everyone's putting out seltzers. Like almost every single beer producer's putting out seltzers. And now, pre mixed cocktails are up 42%. Uh, up to now, $1.6 billion industry. Have you had one? I have. I've actually, the first one I ever like had that was like a good one was at a uh, preview of the. Uh, Riley Arts Center, actually, because, and, you know, I was talking to Adam about it, and, you know, when you have an intermission that's only 10, 15 minutes long, you know, you have all, you know, however many, how many people can fit in? The, in 700. So 700 people coming out all at once, you know, at least half of those probably want some alcoholic drinks to try to make cocktails in that time frame, or to deal with people like, wait, what's your favorite drink? Like, what do you suggest? And... I don't know why I did that voice. <laughs> Hurtful. Uh, what's your yes. favorite drink? What do you suggest? It could be a male or female. No. No, I'd like a right. Pisco it's Sour, not. please, yeah. or White Russian. It's like, sir, we don't have cream and milk here. Right. So it's like, hey, you've got these, you know, however, four to five options that we're just going to crack open, pour over ice. We're still going to garnish it. It's still going to look pretty. It's going to taste amazing. Um, but it's it's really growing in popularity, and that's not just in a situation like that, which that one makes the most sense to me. Um, but it's you're actually you're gonna start seeing them more and more in like ABC Liquors and stuff like that. Um, Have you had the Tango Ray ones? No, <laughs> they're outrageously expensive, right? Because so it's, like, it's like Tangeray fifteen bucks for like I think a six pack. Yeah, like wow. they're not. Yeah, they're yeah. not cheap. They're you're, you're, yeah. they're very proud, but it's just like a. It is actual gin with like seltzer water and lime juice. You know, I don't think there's really much else in it. So it right. is true. Because I was skeptical at first. I was like, oh, this is going to be a bunch of, it's going to be like a soda with all these chemicals in it. Yeah. And then like malt <clears throat> liquor and it's just flavored to taste like gin. Yeah. And it's like, you know, I started looking at the Tangare one and I'm like, oh, this is actually like actual gin and, and tonic and, and it's good. I think you're going to start seeing more of that. I personally hate the malt stuff. 
The malt, like, yeah, malt liquor beverages? Yeah, where, you know, it's like, oh, here, like, I like margaritas, so I bought, like, a bunch of these, like, pre-mixed margaritas, and it's all just, like, wine, malt. I don't like malt liquor that's got a mask on trying to be something else. If you are straight up, like, I am malt liquor, that's fine. I'm malt liquor. <laughs> but if it's, like... <laughs> I'm a strawberry daiquiri right. made with malt liquor. You know, it's like, no, get out of here. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's disgusting. Well, that's like that's like vegetarian food or vegan food. Like, just call it, like, stop calling it a burger. Yes. Oh, my God, I hate that. It's not that. a hamburger, okay? Yeah. Right? Just like, hey, that's a thing that kind of is like what you call really Yeah. Like, I, like, that's my biggest gripe about vegetarian food is like, stop calling it like a chicken nugget. Yeah. I have a reference point of a chicken nugget, and right. this is not that. So yeah. I'm immediately going to hate your drink. Yeah. Just call it like a vegetable fried ball. Food. Food. Yes. Speaking of vegetable fried ball, I had an octopus balls yesterday. It's like takiyaki. Shannon at work. Is Offer. that why we need to check back on you at like <laughs> 9 o'clock? <laughs> uh. there, there's no rhino involved. Uh. No what? I'm not going to go down there. <laughs> <laughs> explain. I'm not going to explain anything. Rhino that. horn? Yeah. We went straight into Chinese ancient medicine then, apparently. What were you getting at when we said octopus balls? I think we're on different <laughs> pages. <laughs> uh, anyway. Okay. You ate octopus yesterday. Uh, and... Yeah, it was amazing. It was from uh, the ramen house. Okay. I can't speak for the ramen, but those little, uh, they taste like sous vide. How are they yes. made? Like, I've had those the, before. Is it fried or? I think yeah. it's fried, okay. yeah. It's like a street food and they have like, yes. they, they're like muffin tins, but they're like little round things. And so they have like a wet batter with the octopus in it. And then they like pour it into these little balls and then they fry up on a disgusting. griddle. Disgusting. They're delicious. That sounds it's, awesome. They're really good. It's made with like fish flakes too. Like, yeah. Oh. It's, a, it's, very it's good. like a real popular horrible. like Japanese street food. When the first time I went to the ramen house, I saw it on the menu and we got it and it was great. Yeah, yeah. it's so good. Anyway, mm. I don't even know where the ramen house is. Where is it? It's on, like, you know that really crappy intersection on 227 yep. and um, Smoothie King, Starbucks. Where Starbucks? It's where the Starbucks Smoothie. used to be. Mm -hmm. Like, okay. it's that plaza you want to go to, but you don't because you don't know how to get out of it. It's in that plaza. Mm -hmm. uh, speaking of Starbucks, I've gone there, like, three. I don't even get Starbucks often, but I've gone there, like, three times and, like, sat at the window, like, trying, like why is no one taking my order? Like, oh, they're closed on at, like, 4 o'clock. On the afternoon? Yeah. I guess they're having a hard time the staffing. No, the one on, well, uh, I happen to be the one on Mary I think too. they all do, because I tried to go to the downtown one not too long ago. What are y'all trying to drink close. coffee after 4 o'clock for? Well, if I'm going to survive I wanted the some rest of the day, eggs. I need a little ew. For, I mean, what do you mean ew? Why did you say ew? Starbucks eggs? They're sous vide eggs. That's undelicious. Do you what? know what sous vide is? <laughs> yes. <laughs> what is it? It's a little, <laughs> the process where it's like cooked <laughs> in boiling water or something. Yeah. Good Come job. on. It's, yes. I did take culinary arts at Forest High School, so I recall some of that information. They had culinary arts at Forest High School? Yeah, I, we, I'm like racking my brain. I'm trying, knowing all the I'm people that went to... there, I can't even. Like, I, mean, I don't remember that. That salt is spicy. We is had a restaurant. For... It was called the House of Forest. Actually, I do yeah, vaguely like remember the restaurant. and yeah. upperclassmen could eat there, and it was a whole thing. Upperclassmen. It was a terrible <laughs> class. I won't lie. I hated it. But it was an easy A. <laughs> all right. Yeah. So, so there. Crocs. Like the mm. shoe? Like the shoe, not the animal. They're making a comeback. Well, they've already made a comeback. Uh, yeah, buddy. They're expecting their uh, the trajectory that they're on. Their sales are going to double within the next five years. And do you know what that would take them to? Doubling their sales? A billion dollars. Wow. Really? A billion? I don't know. Five billion, which means wow. that they're at two and a half like, billion dollars. It's like right Doctor Evil, five. You know how billion. I know? You know how I know they're popular though. My fifteen-year-old nephew has a pair, oh, yeah. and my mother has a pair, and they both. <laughs> and Neither they both one of them should wear them in public. Love them. No, no, no. They, yeah. And so oh, that's why I was just like for a while. Oh yeah. I like the ones that came up in my news feed that were like Ferragamo Crocs that are like Crocs with this like weird looking. I would. I, they're my, called gibbets. I don't know what they are. Some other gibbets that you add to them? No, it's like an actual quote designer croc. It's the most hideous thing I've ever seen. Well, I don't if know I if you've seen a phone, non I, would... I don't know if you've ever seen a non designer croc, but they're the most hideous <laughs> thing you've ever seen. This is even more hideous. It takes it like next level. I'll find it and send it later. Uh, there was a pair of like camping themed crocs 
that had like you know like puffer jacket oh, yeah. uh-huh. it had like a puffer jacket like ankle like fabric around the ankle and then it also had like a extra like reinforced back strap and vinyl pouches on it where the gibbets go it was like this wow. off-road expedition croc and What's it was a like gibbet? a gibbet it's like a charm. i just like saying that word it's, it's a, the charm, it's a charm that you put it's like on a there giblet. that's why i like saying it because that's one of my favorite words Gross. giblets mm-hmm. interesting <sighs> Yeah, it's I but I mean I believe it. It's five billion that means just just that means that they're already at two and a half billion dollars, which blows my mind. How is Kanye West's space crocs holding up against actual croc crocs? How is Kanye West holding up? <laughs> I don't think very good. <laughs> real question. I saw a guy on TikTok that looks just like him. Well my son showed it to me. And he really does look exactly like him and he makes all these like ridiculous like TikTok videos being fake Kanye. Are you it's, sure it's, yeah, are you sure it's fake? I'm sure it's just not Kanye. <laughs> Well, actually, I don't know. I think my favorite <laughs> is that, like, almost... I didn't go down the rabbit hole or whatever. <laughs> all of his captions are always, like, all caps. He's just, like, constantly yelling, and you can just hear everything that he's typing. Yeah. 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 He's a, he, he, but he released those, and I'm like, I never thought you could make Crocs uglier, but, like, he did. Yeah. Well, ugly shoes are on the rise, actually. Which That's like blows uh, my mind. Yeah, I mean, you look at the Balenciagas that are like Ugh. hideous. Those are so bad. Yeah, yeah. nobody should. Do I, that. I said it in the group chat, and I stand by. It. Balenciagas look like something you'd get from Paylesser Sketchers. Totally. Yeah. Absolutely. Like, and, and, it, and no one has yeah. like no one has said no. I like no one has ever defend at least that I know has defended Balenciagas and been like no, they're avant garde. They're just like yeah, they look like Sketchers. They're trash. Yeah. Well, Skechers but they're are like twel- Skechers are better. Well, Skechers are yeah. like sixty nine ninety nine, and Balenciagas are like twelve hundred dollars. So yeah, Skechers are definitely better. <laughs> Skechers are definitely, <laughs> better. definitely. You, can, you know how many Skechers you can get for the price of one Balenciaga? How many? Fast math. I'm not. The math. No, don't put me on the spot. I thought you were the math whiz. I thought you were going to do it. No, mm-mm. I'm legendary, but it's not for my math skills. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what's new and exciting at the Riley? I can go into a lot of different. I'm trying to save you right now. Save who? I can't Oh, <laughs> gosh. New at the Riley. Yes. Um, we opened our expansion. So we did a, we almost, maybe we doubled the size of our building. So it's like a 15,500 square foot expansion. Hell yeah. Um, it's amazing. Uh, the highlight, like my favorite, well, I've got a bunch of favorites, but um, shocking, I know. <laughs> Let me rank them. Let's go through them. Um, well, the new uh, Noma Black Box is my favorite space uh, because black box is it amazing. is just the coolest. It can be literally turned into anything. Um, we've got a jazz series that happens monthly that is real jazz. So, like, I think a lot of people are like, oh, love jazz music. But this is, like, real jazz. Like Kenny G stuff, right? Yes, well, <laughs> we did have Kenny I know. G. Is he coming? He's coming soon. Yeah. Um, but, no, like... Jazz where they, like, take different chords and put them together well, it kind of so hurts your head but you kind of like the, it so we had a, a everyone group, pretends like they know what they're talking about <laughs> a group last it's like week. the drive in fury road of music <laughs> <laughs> you want to feel smarter you just say you like jazz listen to the cool you want to be my guest at the next one <laughs> you're searching for an invite it's I okay you can come am, yeah. Um, the last one, what they did, uh, Coltrane's album Love Supreme, and it was the coolest thing. Well, that's cool. And it had, we have like cafe tables and table service, and so it's just a whole different kind of environment. Um, Are the hors d'oeuvres heavy or light? It um, depends. Okay. Usually light. Okay. I say eat first or after. Gotcha. It's Stop touching me. the microphone. It's probably me. No, no there's you. steady static right now. So. Oh. Then it's you. Yeah, it probably is. <laughs> Basically everything you've been involved in, those in touch on that, has, has I just done tried this. to adjust it. Good. Steady. All right, we're good. All right, what's the next steady. favorite thing about the Riley expansion? Um, the lobby is really beautiful. Oh, they redid Sounds it. It's kind of Wait. ridiculous, but it's so. Um, it's so we have a new lobby that it, is the whole like length of the building on the right. north side. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. And you could have like a whole party in there. Yeah, it's like it's super spacious. Looks awesome. It's great because. When you talk about intermission, you know, when you file back out into the old lobby, you're really crammed in there. You kind of got to go out. It's kind of hard to like, oh, how do we make sure that people, you know, are here because they're supposed to be here. Anyway. Now there's bars everywhere. We can have multiple events happening at one time. Which is awesome. There's a whole like education wing where we'll do music lessons, personal space. Can we go back to the Black Box Theater real quick? I I don't know how many people are familiar with 
what a black box theater is. And you, you kind of said it, but you kind of went pretty quick too. Okay. So black box theater is, is set up to where it can be set up in any kind of arrangement. Yep. You know, you could have a stage. Just like no jazz. Stage. <laughs> <laughs> any kind of arrangement. Be whatever Everything arrangement goes. you want. Right. That's right. Next. The jazz of rooms. It is Good the call jazz back. of rooms. I'm going to start using that on the tour. This by all means, be my guest. <laughs> you can use that. You can use that. <laughs> uh, so, but, you know, yeah, you can have tables. Because what I'm excited about is the opportunity to have, like, round table with entertainment. Right? Does yeah. that make sense? Like, the old school, like... 60s, 70s, like we're going to sit at our table, have service, but actually, like that's yeah, that's something yeah, that you it's could a, do it's there. a totally well. That's what the jazz night is. It's okay. the little cafe tables. They all seat four people. Right. Like if you get the VIP, you have like your bottle at the table yeah. waiting for you. I think unwanted awesome. opinions needs a VIP table. We need and a to VIP. check this out. Yes. Well, I mean, since. You did invite me on today. I probably could pull some <laughs> right. strings. Because we'll, we'll, yeah. that yeah. sounds absolutely amazing. I'm thinking of Anchorman when he goes to play the saxophone and he's like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and you're like in that like smoky room and it's dark and you're sitting Oh, there. see, I was thinking of like Goodfellas and we're going to like shoot someone because they didn't laugh at our joke or something. Oh, uh, we can't. Sh- don't shoot. No violence. <laughs> no, like Riley camera. Center, shoot. Please. Like, okay. yeah, I'm taking it. <laughs> wow. My dude went dark here <laughs> yeah. for a second. I'm like, Speaking Argh. of dark, yeah. gosh. Yeah. <laughs> um, we do have a really fun masquerade coming up. So we're going to celebrate Mardi Gras in a really grand, fabulous way. How much are hand grenades going to cost? This kind of mask, I don't know. Um, I, I, don't <laughs> know. <laughs> I don't know. How would I know? Will they be pre-made? I don't know. Yeah. They will not be pre-made. Okay. Um, but if they were, they would be delicious because only course. the best. The last um, time I had a hand grenade... Last time I had one was in New Orleans, so. Same. <laughs> Same. I think those yep. are best. And maybe I left in it. New Orleans. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, when your plastic cup is shaped like an actual grenade... Yeah. What yeah. else are you going to do with it? And yeah. then I jumped off the second story of the uh, bar area. <laughs> and you were Cause objectively a large... the least wild person yes. there. Because a large gentleman did not understand that no meant no. I'm like, I don't know what else to do. I'm going to toss this hand grenade, jump over this ledge. I'll see you guys in a little bit. That was with Will Dickinson, too. <laughs> Shout out to Willie D. Yeah. <laughs> so a masquerade. Yep, masquerade. And you, you said a mask. Yes, yeah. this kind of mask, not that kind of mask. Okay. Um, and it, which will be super fun. It's um, like seven to eleven, so a later ish party, live music. Like during traditional Mardi Gras time. You know, I. If we're being honest, what I don't know what. I think it's February twenty fifth. Is that thirty? Cool. Is that during traditional Mardi Gras time? I don't know. I don't know either. Then why'd yeah. you ask? I just like you asked. I was like, trying to set you up. It's because I thought maybe you knew. I don't. But I, think, I think it is. I just wanted cake. you to say the date. There's is a all. king cake with a baby in it. And so I had to learn all about that. There's I just like, learned about that, okay, like a year or so ago. I was so weirded out by yeah. there's like, there's, somebody was like, is there a baby in the cake? I'm like, well, that's disgusting. <laughs> yeah. No, there's, but it's like a little toy baby. Okay, I'm it's glad like, I'm not the only one that has like, like learned much later in their life about king cakes with babies in them because I was at someone's house and, and they said that and they're like, it even has a baby in it. And I'm like, what are you talking <laughs> about? Why is there a baby Yeah, in they, the they exclaimed it and everyone else was like, awesome, cool. It's hard to find those now. And it's like, What? You just make them. So you've Albert's, known about this. Chef yeah. Albert's going to make it oh, with the baby. Oh, nice. So, Chef Albert wow. from Stella's. Stella's. Yeah. Nice. That's Hell yeah. Amazing. So That's awesome. And there's a cool, so part of the talking about the black box and all the ways it can be used, there's like an elevated VIP area. That's what's up. I tried to get someone to help me turn it into like a float, but that got kind of kicked <laughs> down. <laughs> oh. um, That's a great idea, though. So it should have been a float. Maybe next time, yeah. you know. Um, but there's like, and that will have uh, sit down dinner and stuff. Are so you, you can have like providing a, beads or do we bring our own? Both. Um, so you can, <laughs> you have there to earn is, the beads that they have. You were ready for that question. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I've gotten it a lot. Um, so you, there's a bead station. So you can <laughs> buy beads. Oh. Um, the most adorned. There's a prize for the most adorned. And you can give beads it's a nice for way of whatever it. makes your <laughs> yeah. life happy. Um, Adam's thing about it, he like made a post and it was the funniest thing. He's like, see cool dance moves, give them beads. Like their outfit, give them beads. I'm like, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> see, they're cool. I just yeah. can't wait to see some see, of these cool, cool dance moves and oh. be like, <laughs> <laughs> here you go. <laughs> yeah. I'll be emceeing, so I'll be totally sober, so it'll be fine. Mm, sure. Different kind of fun. Yeah. And, um, or maybe I'll just bail on the MC so I can drink. <laughs> it's fine. Um, I didn't say that for my coworkers. Who or just listening. do like plenty of people that we know. They're like, I'll be D&D. 
And then, like, ah, oh, we gotta get an Uber now. We're gonna have to split this. Cause yeah. Thank God well, for Uber. I, like, yeah. don't wanna... I'm comfortable in front of a crowd with a microphone sober, but I am, like, a total loose cannon after <laughs> one and a half drinks. <laughs> so, it's, uh... <laughs> I want to save everything by not showing up. I can, I can, having emceed events, I can understand that because it's, sometimes your filter is extremely fickle. I don't know if that's the right word, but it's just like, even one beer where it's like a normal situation where you're not emceeing, like one beer, it's like, you don't feel it. You don't really, it's not like you're buzzed or even remotely drunk off of it, but like that. That that mouth, brain to mouth filter, like one beard, it just goes kaboom and it falls well, it's over. Like things that you would say in conversation, right? Are fine, yeah. But then you've got a microphone. You're like, do you see those awful dance moves? Right. Like, yeah, right. Take her beads away. So here's I some <laughs> sympathy beads. <laughs> <laughs> Gross. <laughs> Gross. Just kidding. Beads for everyone. I yeah. Love everyone. We're all, not gonna all judge all you beads. on your dance moves. Just yeah. be dancing. Just be dancing. That's right. Yeah. So we, we don't dance shame. So we've got just a few minutes left. I want to shout out because I forgot to do it last week, even though I posted about it. That we have, and I've talked about it already, but we have three U.S. Olympians that are representing the U.S. by way of Ocala, Florida. Ocala. Brittany Bow, Aaron Jackson, and Joey Mantia. Um, it's funny. Well, it's not funny. <laughs> Ocala, the best. Sorry, Joey. Speed skating. <laughs> Joey had his first event, the 1500. Which he just literally broke a world record like in December and uh, just wasn't able to pull it out on this one. It was a few seconds behind his time that he had just put out and ended up sixth in the world. And I was like, it's kind of weird that I have to like send you an apology that you play yeah. sixth in the world. What a bummer. <laughs> yeah. Oh, gosh. What a bummer while being the world champion. Like, what a weird thing. Yeah, there's not many people that are sixth in the world. Yeah, he's like, ah, I'm surprisingly, I'm doing okay. He's got three more events. Brittany has, I think, um, Team Two Pursuit. More? Yeah, mm-hmm. Team Pursuit. And um, she may do the female mass start. I'm not sure. But Joey's got the 1,000-meter Team Pursuit and mass start. And he's got a really good shot, again, at gold for those. I'm so happy that, like, A, we have Ocala represented on the world stage. But also, B, Ocala's in the news for something that's not, like, (laughs) absolutely (laughs) awful. You know, it's like, hey, cool, we have world-class athletes for a sport that no one associates with Florida. Right. Like, because I certainly don't think speed skating... Not speed ice, ice skating. Yeah. I mean, I remember when, people skating really fast back at Skate Mania, but uh, I had future no idea ultimate drivers. Were, yeah, future ultimate drivers. <laughs> I, I mean, I do remember the speed skaters like on like rollerblades, uh-huh. but like I, I did. I guess I didn't realize that that translates over to ice, and then that you know how well, you practice and... with heavy work it translates over to ice. It definitely. Which uh, one's harder? Do you think? Uh, that's a question for them, not for me. I think I'm sure ice, the Olympians. I think the ice is harder because it's slippery. Like just all the things. Like can you like. The chance of falling into the water. Skating, like regular ice, like if the ice skating breaks. is hard enough. So yeah. I can't imagine what. what? Thank you for joining <laughs> us. I was waiting for you guys to wrap up the ice skating time. I, well, it's an important. I can go on for it, Trying to figure it out. <laughs> we, we could or just end How about it there. the twirls? Yeah. We're going to have to have you okay. back late. And Everyone we have a full that's episode. joined us uh, through all the technical difficulties, thank you so much. We out. <laughs>